So a typical CR application or cognitive radio application is the opportunistic spectrum utilization, then intelligent beam forming, then automated interoperability, like communication among the emergency services, like ambulances, the police, spectrum trading, and so on. Till now, I have explained about designing a cognitive radio network using NetSim and the cognitive radio basics. Now I will explain how a user or a researcher can modify this protocol source code in NetSim and execute it. So the protocol source code is written in C and it is provided along with NetSim. Users can modify this code, link it and execute. Users can also use third party IDE like Visual Studio to debug the protocol codes or edit them. So now I will demonstrate the editing of code and while performing this experiment, I will be also printing hello world in the console. So as you can see, these are the folders which contain the protocol source code, for example, TCP. You can see the various C files. Now to assess the user, we have also given a NetSip Visual Studio solution file. So all the protocol source codes are compiled here in the form of projects. So users can easily access the files and check the contents. So this is the cognitive radio code. These are the cognitive radio codes. And as you can see here, the various sub events the various channel states, which I have just now explained, like operating, backup, candidate, disallowed. So in case the user wants to modify the channel states or the sub events, they can easily perform from here. Now, these are the super frame control header formats, which are specified or implemented as per the IEEE standard. And the code is also heavily commented. So this makes it very easy for the protocol developer to work by himself. This is the frame control header format. So what I will do is in the 802 underscore 22 dot C code, I will add a printed statement, which will print hello world for me. So modifying a protocol source code in NetSim and implementing it is very, very easy. It is all about three steps. So step one is modifying the code, which I will do now. So I have added two lines of code that is it will print hello world and then it will wait for me to press a button. I mean execution will wait here. So this is about step one. The researcher has to modify the code as per their logic. Then step two is to build the DLL. So the procedure for building a DLL in Visual Studio is very easy. You just need to right click, build or rebuild. So you can see here once succeeded and the DLL is created here in this folder. So if you can see here, the timing is given 344. This DLL has just now been created. So step one, edit the code. Step two, build the DLL. And step three is copy this DLL into the bin folder.
just for safety i am keeping a backup of the original dll and i will copy my modified dll so now netsim will read this modified dll so if i go back to netsim and i perform this same simulation once again you can see here now netsim is printing hello world so this is the reason that is because i have inserted this code so this is all about editing the code and attaching it to netsim it is really easy furthermore in order to reduce the time and effort of the protocol developers netsim provides apis which can be reused to perform activities like packet creation or deletion so instead of writing your own code for copying the packet you can just call this api similarly for the deletion the ip address comparison and many more also netsim provides a manual to assist developers while writing or editing the source code So this was all about modifying the cognitive video source code in C and these are the codes for let's say example so in the source code manual users can see the relation among the functions and also the code now how to develop the custom metrics there has been numerous cases where researchers have informed us that they want some more information in the performance metrics as you see here than the standard available ones so we have figured out a way such that anyone can edit the code and display specific metrics they want to know so in this example Uh, we will edit the code and netsim will print the number of super frames and the time stamp of their occurrence so i already have the code ready so to do it in front in as a demonstration i will also show you the modifications which i have done and why i am doing so these are just the declaration of the variables and arrays which one needs to do so i have declared one integer and two arrays of type integer and double then i am i will be initializing this super frame count integer to 0 and this counting will be done only during the transmission of the super frame control headers so i will add this code in the super frame control header transmission case so here you can see transmit sh so what it will do is the super frame count will keep a track of number of super frames transmitted and the time will also be saved in the super frame underscore time array and to print this metric all i need to do is print it using the function netsim cr matrix which is also present in this 802.22.c file
so this is the amount of modification you need to do which is very very less now, all you need to do is build the dll once again copy this modified dll and paste it in the bin folder so now if i simulate it so you can now see a new matrix has been added after application matrix that is the cr super frame matrix which is keeping a track of the super frame and the time at which the super frame was transmitted so this was not there before so in this manner users can get the values the respective values they want which are not already being shown in the performance matrix so netsim is catering to hundreds of customers worldwide both academic and research domain from academic domain we have some of the top tier universities using netsim we are also assisting various different labs and enterprises in the network research and implementation so these are some of the research areas where netsim can be used or is currently being used so for cognitive radio networks it is used for spectrum sensing and incumbent detection research the super frame the spectrum allocation the geolocation and location based services the protocol architecture so thank you everyone my demonstration is finished but if you have any queries you are you can feel free to ask i would suggest you type it in the questions box so that i can reply easily and in case if i am not able to cover your question then i will surely inform you via email okay so i have got a question how good is netsim over ns2 or colnet so colnet it's another proprietary tool while ns2 is of open source so let me tell you the difference between netsim and ns2 first of all in netsim you will get mpls technologies like gsm cdma cognitive radio and in ns2 you will not have mpls or gsm cdma again ns2 is cli based that is the user needs to write the tql scripts whereas in netsim you just need to click and drop the nodes also the network stack in netsim the network stack is initiated as per the real device that is the tcp ip fiveless stack we have implemented but in ns2 there is no explicit stack and analysis features like packet traces is also not there in ns2 then the interfacing of matlab uh, i have not yet explained and maybe in the upcoming webinar i'll be explaining how to interface matlab with netsim so interfacing matlab interfacing wireshark with ns2 is not possible and i should all uh, maybe uh, many of the researchers here will know this that ns2 development has been discontinued from around 2010 so the support has also been stopped in addition newer protocols like iot it is not possible to do in net ns2 now uh, i mean the researcher has to modify the codes by itself but in netsim we are upgrading our technologies with time then one can also consider the support so for ns2 or any open source tools uh, getting a support or any help from online is a little tough because you have to post your questions and wait for the answer from a person i mean who is already working on that domain but in netsim you can directly communicate with us with the developers and usually we reply the queries within 24 to 48 hours so regarding a demonstration on wireless sensor network uh, 
as a matter of fact we will be having a webinar on wireless sensor network in march 25th so we will be handing out the emails the information to all of you regarding registration of the webinar on wireless sensor network on 25th march Uh, can you show wireless sensor network we have a webinar on wireless sensor network on 25th march so during that time we will be explaining wireless sensor network in netcell is it a open source software uh, the question is, okay no ma'am this it is not a open source software it's a proprietary tool thank you sir regarding lt webinar we will be having it on the uh, month of april or may we will be notifying you accordingly you can also check our website so the updated information regarding webinars or events related to netsim will be provided in the website so our website is www.techcast.com you can check our website so in the events you can get to know the list of webinars and if we are presently at any workshop or any conference also users can get information regarding netsim via our youtube channel that is youtube.com/techcast you can access it from our website also you can click on watch videos on netsim and the various videos like interfacing matlab with netsim all the information are available okay a uh, user or researchers can also as i said modify the code Uh, yes ma'am uh, we can share this presentation with you also it's not a issue uh, yes sachin sir uh, you can use it for cross led designing also uh, this we can also we will be showing you during wireless sensor network webinar where leech protocol is a, actually a cross led protocol and has been implemented in netsim Yes sir uh, you can simulate spectrum sharing in netsim any experiment related to resource allocation is possible so we will be sharing you with the information regarding how the resource allocation is done in netsim can i use netsim for phi and mac layer protocol development Yes sir you can use as a matter of fact cognitive radio is a protocol running in the phi and mac layer so whatever i have shown you is the modification there so thank you all it was not possible to cover every the questions forwarded by everyone but we will be informing you the answers through your to your email ids thank you